Hey, in this video, we're going to talk about linearization and how it can be used to simplify the more complicated functions that we might need to talk about. So it is often useful to approximate complicated functions, so approximate, not actually recreate, with simpler ones that give the accuracy we want for specific applications, and at the same time are easier to work with than the original functions. The approximating functions discussed in this section are called linearizations, and they are based on tangent lines. So this is just one case of a simpler function that can be used to approximate a more complicated function. There are many, many different functions we can use to simplify a complicated situation, and you're going to learn about those as you go through math courses. So we have to start somewhere. So we're going to start with the most basic option. We're going to simplify by creating a straight line. Now, you might be wondering, how can a straight line approximate a function that has a curve? For example, here, if you look at the picture, this is a parabola. Does a straight line approximate a parabola well? Not in general, but we're going to focus in on just one particular point and those points around it. So if you look at this point here on this parabola, if we want to approximate near this point, so any x values near 1, so this is x value of 1, then we can talk about how a straight line could be a good approximation. Now obviously, as you move away from your point of tangency, the further along your parabola you get, the more the tangent line is not a good approximation. And that is a problem with linearization, is it's only good in a very small neighborhood but it's really good in a small neighborhood. So for example, in the following images, we can see the parabola, y equals x squared, and the tangent line to the curve at the point 1, 1. The tangent line is very close to the curve near the point of tangency. We can see this more clearly by zooming in around the point 1, 1. So here's the original. Okay, if we zoom in a little bit, I want you to look at this curve. You see how the curve, the parabola, is really close to the tangent line? Well, if we keep zooming in further and further, here on the left, you can see we're closer. There's just a little bit of error over here, but look at how small our interval is. We're going from 0.8 to 1.2. We're just around the 1 value, a little bit to the left of the 1 and a little bit to the right of 1. And then over here, we've zoomed in so far that we are barely any distance at all from 1. But the further you zoom in, the more you can see that the tangent line is a good approximation to the parabola only though very close to your point of tangency. If you move away from that point of tangency, the further out you go, you're going to cause a lot more error in your approximations. All right, so important note, this situation, the concept of the straight line approximating the curve, the situation occurs, occurs for every differentiable curve compared to its tangent line, at least locally to the point of tangency. So as long as you can find the derivative, and that, um, around that point, you're able to talk about the line being tangent, being a good approximation, very close to that point. All right, so something I want to review real quick is how the equation of a tangent line. So given a differentiable equation, y equals f of x, and a point x equals a, we can write the equation of the tangent line at x equals a in a general form. So how do we find the equation of a tangent line? Do you remember? Well, we use the equation y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we need our slope and we need our point x, y in order to find the tangent line. So the slope of the tangent line, remember, is found how? Who gives us the slope of a tangent line? The derivative of the function evaluated at the point you're interested in. So in this case, our point is x equals a. So we're going to plug a in to our derivative. So that's the slope of our tangent line. And then our point that we're at is, well, x is a. They gave us that. How do we find the y value? Well, remember, y is just f of x. So if we plug in our a for x, we get our corresponding y value. So if we have the point a, f of a, and we have the slope at that point, f prime of a, we can write out the tangent line in general. So y minus f of a, that's our y value, equals our slope, f prime of a, times x minus our x value, which is a. Solve for y. So y equals, I'm just going to copy down what we already had on the right-hand side, and bring f of a around, so it becomes positive f of a. This is the equation 
of the tangent line. Now, what I want to show you is what you already know, the equation of the tangent line. We've been working with this a lot. All I did was do it in general. I want you to compare what's in the box at the top to this new definition. This is called the linearization of function f at the point a. But look at it. It's in a different order. f of a is at the beginning. f prime of a, x minus a is, you know, different order. But it's the same thing. Whether you add, whichever order you add them in, it's still the same values, same function, same equation. So what does this mean? We aren't actually coming up with something new here. A linearization is simply your tangent line at the point A. So if they ask you to find the linearization, what are they really asking you for? They're asking you for the tangent line at that point. So we are going to use the function, or we're going to approximate the original function by building a linearization. But a linearization is simply a tangent line. So we're approximating the function with a tangent line. Let's give it a shot here. Let's try one. So it says find the linearization. Well, cross out linearization and write tangent line. That's really what they want. Okay. How do we do that? Well, we need the slope of the tangent line. To find the slope of the tangent line, you need the derivative. Well, here's our function f. Well, to find the derivative of this function, we need to do some algebra first. Let's rewrite it as a power. x plus 1 to the 1 half power. Well, technically, you're going to use the power chain rule to take the derivative. So the derivative is going to be 1 half comes down, x plus 1 to the 1 less, so negative 1 half. The derivative of the inside is just 1, so that doesn't change anything. If you want to rewrite it as a fraction, you can. So 1 over 2, the parentheses can come down, and we can write it as a square root of x plus 1. And there you have your derivative. Now we need the tangent line at 0. So we're going to evaluate by plugging in 0. So evaluate at x equals 0. Plug in 0 for x. We get 1 over, let's see, 0 plus 1, that's 1, square root of 1 is 1, times 2, well that's just a 2. There's your slope. Alright, so in order to find the tangent line, what else do we need? We have our x value, we have our slope, we still need y. Well remember, y is just f evaluated at your x. So we need the square root of 0 plus 1, or the square root of 1, which is 1. There's your y value. You have everything you need now. The slope of the tangent line is going to be 1 half. Your point x is 0, y is 1. So let's write out the formula for the point, uh, point slope equation and plug everything in. So we're just finding the tangent line. So y minus 1 equals 1 half x minus 0. So we can simplify. So x minus 0 is just x. So it's 1 half x. Bring the 1 around, so plus 1. And there's the equation of your tangent line or your linearization L of x. So our curve is in this picture here, the blue curve. And we are focusing in on x equals 0. So the box here, this green box that you see, this tangent line is the one that we just found. So here's your tangent equation that you just found. They wrote a little differently, but it's equivalent. Now this green box, we're going to zoom in on, and that's what we see on the right here. Notice when we zoom in, the tangent line and the curve are very close to each other, at least around our x value. Remember, our x value that we centered at, um, we found our slope at is zero. So we're really close to zero Then these two curves, the line, tangent line, and the curve square root of x plus one are very close to each other. So if we want to find out what f of 0 0.1 is, we can plug 0 0.1 into our linearization and find the value. So that's what the next part's about. We are now able to approximate the function values of f using the linearization L. This, however, will create a certain amount of error. Determine how much error is involved if we approximate f of 0.5 using the linearization. All right, so first of all, the error means what? Well, the function has a value, 0 0.5. The linearization has a value, which approximates the function value. Are these the same? Probably not. How different are they, though? That's what we want to know. 
To find the error, you simply subtract the two. So the error, let's see, we need to find our values first. All right, so f of 0.5, we can find by simply using the function. So we want that real value, f of 0.5. So square root of 0 0.5 plus 1. So that's the square root of 1.5. If we punch that in our calculator, we get 1.2247. So I'm going out to four decimal places. I'm going pretty far because I don't know where we're going to see the difference. On the other hand, we can approximate 0 0.5 in the function. We can approximate it by using the linearization and plugging in 0.5. So linearization is our tangent line that we already found. So we can find the linearization value by plugging in 0.5 there. So 1 half times 0.5 plus 1. If we punch that into our calculator, we get 0 0.25 plus 1 or 1.25. Now you can see here this is the actual value of the function and this is the approximate value. There's not a lot of difference but there is a difference. That difference is our error. So the error is equal to uh, the subtraction. So 1.2247 minus 1.25 which equals, let's see, so it would technically be negative 0.0252. I believe when we answer this question, we use the just the positive value. We just want to know how far off it is. We don't really want to know which direction. So your answer would just be 0 0.0252. Okay. Okay, so that's how you find the error. Um, let's do it again. But this time, I want you to observe what's happening here. Our linearization that we built was built at x equals 0. This is where we built L of x at. So when we did the approximation here, we approximated at only 0 0.5. Well, that's really close to where our linearization was centered, where our point of tangency was. Now we're going to try it at 3. So we got a really small error, relatively speaking. Uh, what happens if we move away from that? Let's see. So we're going to look for the error between f of 3 and the linearization at 3. To do that, we got to find the two values. So let's look at f of 3 first. f of 3 is the square root, so we're still working with the same function, 3 plus 1, or the square root of 4, which is 2. L, or sorry, the approximate value for f of 3, we can approximate with L of 3, the linearization at 3. So that would be 1 half times 3 plus 1, or 3 over 2 plus 1, or 1.5, so that would be 2.5. So if we look for the error, we simply subtract the 2. So 2 minus 2.5 is negative 0.5, but error we always give the positive value. We just want to know the dif difference between the two. So how do these two errors compare? When we've moved further away from the center of our linearization, our error has increased quite a bit, 20 times more. That's quite a bit of error in comparison. So why is there more error for the approximation of f of 3? This is because x equals 3 is further from our point of tangency. which was at x equals 0. Okay, so those are my examples for linearization. I hope that helps you. If you have questions, as always, reach out to me. Make sure you practice these. They do require practice to remember how to do them. Basically, a linearization is just a fancy word for a tangent line. As long as you stay close to your point of tangency, you have a good tool for approximation. So study hard. I'll see you in the next video.